Hello guys, it's Joe Butler. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at my uh, new Stug 3 that I did. Uh, so this is another model rework um, from a previous model that I did. Uh, I do have a video up of my old Stug 3 if you guys want to go and check that out. Um, but over time that slowly uh, did not meet my standards and recently I decided to uh, to completely remake the Stug 3. So the whole reason why my Panzer 3 exists is because of this, the Stug 3. So the original goal was to uh, redo my Stug 3 and you know while while I was building the Panzer 3 Panzer 3 chassis which the Stug 3 uses, I thought, you know, might as well also make a, a Panzer 3 and that's what I did. And I ended up building three Panzer Threes, which is absolutely insane. Um, but yeah, this is the final result of the uh, the Stug slash Panzer Three project. I can I consider them the same project to be honest, because uh, they're pretty similar. Um, but yeah, here's the Stug Three, um, one thirty fifth scale as usual. Uh, over ten thousand uh, Stug Threes were built during the war. Uh, the model which was built the most was the Stug 3G, and that was the last model. Um, the models before that were like the A, B, uh, C, D, E, and F. And the F model is pretty important because that's when they switched to the, the long 75 to help counter uh, heavy Soviet armor, like the KV-1 and the T-34. And then on the Stug 3G, uh, they just refined that even more and they switched from an L43 cannon to an L48 cannon and all that means is, is just the cannons longer uh, so they just increased the the barrel length which which improves it which improves muzzle velocity which in turn improves penetration but that's that's just slightly it wasn't a huge improvement um, in the Stug 3G uh, throughout the war you would see it with, with side skirts and with a MG shield and also, uh, sometimes they would have like a remote control um, machine gun on the top. And the Jagdpanzer 38T Hetzer also used that. Uh, but that was pretty rare. Uh, not common at all. Um, but yeah, this, this was the, the armored fighting vehicle of the Germans that probably definitely destroyed the most tanks by far. And you can totally see why. This is like a pretty cheap armored vehicle to build. This is not technically a tank. This is technically called an assault gun by the Germans. The original idea of the Stug 3 was to assault positions with a uh, cannon that was firing uh, with direct sights. Um, but, you know, of course, as the Germans were usually low on tanks uh, and compared to the Soviets and the Western Allies, uh, they they pushed the Stug 3 more and more into an anti-tank role. Um, so that's what the Stug 3 is most well known for. However, even though it received a longer cannon, it still uh, also did the role of infantry support. So this thing, you know, designed for one role, in reality it did two roles. Uh, and hell, it would even do like three rolls. Uh, sometimes when Panzer divisions were super low on tanks, they would they would actually take in Stug 3s and just use them as tanks. Um, which I guess you could do. However, this thing does not have a turret, so it doesn't offer uh, the same advantages that a normal tank would. Uh, so the camouflage I did here is like your typical German uh, ambush camouflage. Olive green, reddish brown, and tan. This is what you see uh, mostly on older Brickmania models, which I really like. I, I really still like this camo. Uh, and hopefully I can do it more on other vehicles. However, the problem with this camo in LEGO is that uh, Olive Green is like has like really bad availability. Like there's not a lot of parts in Olive Green. So unfortunately there wasn't much I could do there. Uh, but I think I did a, a pretty good job uh, with the colors that were available. But anyways, uh, this is the end of the first part, so let's go on to the to the comparison now. So I'll be right back. All right, so here she is. Um, so she can roll. 
uh, pretty decently actually. Uh, good enough for uh, stop motion, which is all that I care about. Not really doing a good job here. There you go. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah, you can see that. So yeah, the rolling is actually pretty good. Um, not not good enough for play, but good enough for stop motion. Um, also, uh, hatches are functional on this. So the loader's hatch does open. And, and it is actually correct. It is at, at an angle, which was uh, just like on the real Stug 3. And the commander's hatch also opens. So you can put a put a guy in there and I will right now so you can put a guy right here he won't fit in all the way uh, so you do have to take his his legs off but I'm totally fine with that and also uh, for the loader's hatch you definitely have to take his take his legs off but when you put him in like that he actually fits uh, pretty well in there um, so yeah it has uh, functioning hatches um, the gun sadly does not elevate up and down, uh, it's pretty much fixed in place and it kind of has, I'm going to be honest here, it has like a pretty janky connection, uh, it's not the strongest. Uh, also the cannon barrel, uh, uses a pretty new part, uh, this is the reddish brown candle piece. Uh, it's pretty new, so it's pretty rare and kind of expensive, but thankfully I only need a three. Uh, so it did not cost too, too much. Um, here's the rear. I was missing some parts there, so that's why there's some gray on the back. Uh, but that will be fixed. Um, and I mean, yeah, I think this looks really good. Uh, let's put a minifig next to it. So here's a uh, Stug Commander. I don't know if I showed this in a video, off in a video or not. Um, but yeah, this is a really nice fig. Put him right there. And here's a uh, an Angel Bricks uh, German infantryman. And I put like a mini fig cat uh, gun sling on him. And we'll put him next to here. And you see you have like a nice little, nice little setup there. Another thing I want to mention about this model. Uh, so the so the thing that really separates. Uh, this Stug 3 from other LEGO Stug 3s is that I invented a new technique. Well, invented is probably the wrong word. Um, I didn't invent this, but I think I was the first person to utilize this in a Stug 3 build. So here I'm using like the weird uh, 45 de degree uh, slope brick piece. Uh, and I have them like sitting on each other. Uh, and the way this is done is like kind of weird. Um, I'm not going to tell you how I did it, but yeah, it, it's it's pretty cool how I did it inside. And you can see on the other side there. So I I really have like a, a perfect um, 45 degree slope on the side here. On a lot of LEGO Stug 3s three, three, so that you see, uh, when you look at like this angle, it doesn't really look correct because either they're using like the cheese slope or something or it looks too small because they only use like the, the 45 degree brick um, but on this one it's just the the right size which means that it is literally perfect and that's what a that's what a lot of builders told me uh, they were really impressed about this part and I and I gotta agree with them this this part of the build is the best part my second favorite part is probably the front here uh, just like with the Panzer tree I was able to really uh, get those angles down. Um, so yeah. But anyways, uh, that was the that was that, and let's go on to the vehicle comparison now. So here is the OG Stug Three, and I'll just zoom out here. And I apologize. Uh, this Stug Three is very very dusty. Um, I have not messed with, it, with this thing in a while. Uh, oh god, that is that is actually embarrassing. I'm I'm so sorry. <laughs> I really have to get like uh, glass display cases or something. Uh, but I don't want to because I would be spending like way too much money. Uh, more more than this hobby uh, warrants. Um, 
Oh yeah, another thing I forgot before I talk about the comparison between the two. Uh, so I do have a gun shield for this stud three. It can be put on this reverse stud right here. It's kind of a, a janky, it's just a one stud connection. Um, and it's kind of hard to put on because the connection's pretty weak. Oh, come on, you bastard. All right, so I just got the uh, gun shield on my stud three. And I gotta say, it is an absolute bitch to get that thing on. Um, so that's why I don't really have it with the gun shield. But it is an option. It is there. Um, if someone ever wanted a, a gun shield on it. Um, unfortunately, like, it's kind of awkward for a minifig. You can see that the gun completely blocks, like, the hatch. Um, so that's a little bit unfortunate. Uh, but it's there uh, as a extra detail um, if someone ever wanted that um, but yeah I'm gonna take it off now because I don't really like it to be honest pretty hard to come up with a with a scale accurate uh, gun shield um, but uh, yeah and you can see here like <laughs> getting that thing on like took absolutely forever I had I had to cut out so much footage uh, but yeah so there is a gun shield. Uh, this one also has a gun shield, but it's way more basic. Uh, but yeah, anyways, let's get into the comparison. So you can see the front angles are a bit, are a bit different. Uh, on the old one, has a lot of studs. On this one, it's a bit more clean. However, there are still studs on it, which kind of sucks. <coughs> which kind of sucks. Um, the gun on this one does elevate up and down. And also this one does have uh, working hatches as well. I would say uh, the old one is better for play. Um, and I still think the old one looks uh, pretty good actually. Uh, I still really like it, but of course I'm gonna disassemble it and take it apart. And also this has a uh, spray, I spray painted these pieces. So if you're wondering why they look different, uh, that's why. Um, but yeah. Uh, however, the main difference between the old and the new is the width. So the new one is actually slightly skinnier than the old one. And you can see on the old one it uses 1.5 wide tracks, but it has uh, two wide fenders. While on the new one it has 1.5 wide tracks and it has like 1.5 wide uh, fenders. Uh, so the new one has better fenders, which allows it to be a bit more accurate. Um, I'm sorry if this commentary is horrible right now. I'm just, <laughs> I, had, I had like uh, some online classes today, so I'm just kind of bamboozled right now. Um, and I want to get this video out because I'm like getting really, really, really close to... Uh, to having 4,000 watch hours, which will allow me to apply for a uh, YouTube partnership. Um, but anyways, that's like a separate topic. So here's the rear. Um, I gotta say, I like the I like the new one a lot better. Another big difference between the old one and the new one is that the old one does not have any uh, slopes on the side. So you can see on the top there, there's like no slopes. But on the new one, you can see that there's a panel piece and it's like, slightly sloping down so you can see it uh, much better right here so you can see the the small sl sloping effect while well, this one doesn't have any of that I gotta say the new one uh, just has a lot more like small details on it than the than the old one um, what else do I want to mention about these guys um, I mean, I don't really have much else to say. I, I gotta say that the, the new one has a better uh, rear to it than the, uh, than the old one. Uh, let's compare compare the length. The length, I haven't really done that. Oh, look at that. The, the new one is shorter than the old one. And that's uh, to be expected uh, because I am working at a, a very strict uh, 135 scale. Um, 
So anyways, that was uh, the comparison with my old Stug 3. And last but not least is the Panther 3. Of course, this would not be a proper Stug 3 video without the actual Panther 3. Um, so not really much to compare here. To compare here, you can just see like what I actually did uh, to change to. Um, the front is literally the same across both of them. The only difference is the uh, superstructure. And of course it is a lot different. Um, the rear is pretty much the same. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I don't really have much else to say there. Um, I think I'm going to end the video now because this has gone on for way too long. Uh, my commentary has been very incoherent. Because I'm just kind of bamboozled right now. I've been working pretty hard at school. Uh, but thankfully, um, next week is spring break. So I will be able to uh, hopefully do some more LEGO content. Uh, Pre-upload more videos. Uh, I do, I do pre-upload videos. Uh, however, usually they're only like a day or two in advance. Um, but hopefully uh, with this extra time I can just, you know get more content out. Uh, but yeah, anyways, I'm going to go now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time, hopefully on Friday. All right, bye-bye.